What's going on, y'all? It's J.D. Piquel today on The Hard Count. We're going to talk about LSU and Florida State's wild game in New Orleans. Welcome into the Hard Count, the people show for every single thing that you know and that you love about college football. It happens here on a daily basis. Nick Brake doing the heavy lifting. You can help drive the show by subscribing to the channel. Quick note before we get into the subject matter here, we're on podcast. So... Apple, we're there. Spotify, we're there. Wherever you get your podcasts, you can find The Hard Count. We got our podcast out from our long-form show yesterday, recapping the majority of week one. But we got to talk about what happened last night. LSU and Florida State went toe-to-toe in New Orleans, and the game had just about anything you could ask for. Turnovers, you got it. Quarterbacks running for their life, you got it. Defensive line play, you got it. Blocked field goals, You definitely got it. So to give you a quick recap, we're going to fast forward to the end of the game here. And LSU just gets a quick stop on Florida State. They're going to get the ball back. They're down by a touchdown. It's 24-17. They kick the ball deep. And Malik Neighbors drops the punt. Heart breaks for the kid. It was his second muffed punt of the afternoon. But at this point, the game seemed finished. Florida State is about to go in and score. They're within the five-yard line. I want to say they're on the two or even the one-yard line. Call a toss play. The toss is low. Ball's on the ground. LSU jumps on it. LSU ball. They got to go 99 yards in a matter of a minute and a half, a little less than that, to tie the game up. And keep in mind, Jaden Daniels been running for his life all night, kind of caught his tempo a little bit towards the end of the game. But for the most part, this LSU offense sort of sputtered. They'd get into second gear and then sort of fizzle out. They go 99 yards in a matter of a minute and a half, score a touchdown as time expires. It's 23-24, an extra point away from overtime. And Florida State leaks through, gets a paw on it, blocks the extra point. Florida State storms the field. I mean, you felt like you lived three or four lifetimes in one game. But I want to talk about some of the observations because I think there's quite a bit to take away from both these teams from the first game. So for LSU, wasn't a super clean game, obviously. I mean, they offensively had their own issues up front. This offensive line, like we knew, it was going to be a little bit of a work in progress. Five new guys starting, true freshmen starting, so... Florida State, with their defensive line and how good they are up front, they decided to take advantage of that, decided to play aggressive. Jared Verse played really well for Florida State, got after the quarterback, had four sacks as a defensive unit. Jared Verse had two of those sacks. But Jaden Daniels, to his credit, did a really good job evading pressure and picking up what the defense wasn't accounting for on the back end. Because for Florida State, they played a lot of man coverage. They said, we feel like our guys on the back end are better than your guys, and we're going to go man. And to their credit, they did a good job putting pressure on Jaden Daniels and forcing the issue. So Jaden Daniels, when he saw that man coverage, meaning these DBs are looking at the receiver, so their backs to the quarterback, that first second read wasn't there. Jaden Daniels took off. And so I don't know that we're going to get a real sample size on what Jaden Daniels is as a passer for the duration of the season from this game because of that pressure and because of the offensive line still developing. But he showed you why he's a starting quarterback because of the plays he was able to make when the play broke down, he was able to pick up big first downs. He finished with 16 carries, 114 yards. He was the reason the offense moved forward. Now, throwing the football, we talked about it. They were a little bit inconsistent. Kayshawn Butte was missing for the majority of the night. He's got his own issues going on right now, it sounds like, based on his social media and the happenings there. Unfollowed the majority of his teammates, I understand. Removed LSU from his bio. We're not going to speculate too much on that in this video. All that's to say, the wide receiver play for LSU was something you were banking on a little bit more if you're a Tiger fan. And unfortunately... It didn't live up to the expectations in this game. And a lot of that was because Jaden Daniels getting through a three-step drop and having to run around for his life. I think the offense is going to be better going forward. The run game outside of Jaden Daniels was also virtually non-existent. 
And I think John Emery is going to be a big addition when they get him back, kind of have the downhill back, be able to go north and south. You have two backs that are solid in, in Kane and Goodwin, but not necessarily the thumper that you're going to get in John Emery. So my thesis for LSU as a whole is a little bit incomplete because the defense is, is still sort of getting their wits about them, I would say. You lost Mason Smith early in the game, and that was a big loss, obviously, with all of his talent and what he brings from a presence standpoint on that defensive line. But what we can gather, what we can observe from this game is that towards the end of the game, when the pressure was on LSU, when they got squeezed, I think we saw flashes of what they're capable of. It may not be all-encompassing, it may not be a conclusion, but what we can tell from just this one small sample size, you saw, okay, they're really talented, they have athletes all over the field, and they rose to the occasion. Credit to them. It was too little too late, but they're a work in progress. And Brian Kelly said as much after the game. He said, we got to figure out how to do things the right way. We got to figure out how to play all four quarters. The effort wasn't there. The sense of urgency wasn't there. And so you can have all the talent in the world, but if you're not putting it together as an organization, as a program, well, then it's all for naught. And that's what Brian Kelly was saying. And that's what he's ultimately going to provide for LSU in the long term. But if I'm a Tiger fan, if there's anything to take away from this game to be encouraged about, it's how you played for the last quarter of that game. How you pressed the last quarter of that game to find a way to tie it up. Because they could have thrown in the towel. Florida State got up on them. Florida State was, again, forcing the issue with that defensive front, and they could have very easily said, hey, that's it, man. That's, that's it for us. First-year head coach, new starting quarterback for our program at least. Like, hey, we're, we're going to go ahead and just throw in the towel. And to press the issue, to make it a game at the very end, and to be an extra point away, that in itself is something where you can say, okay, not at all how we wanted this to go. We are not taking any moral victories. But we've shown that, hey, when we turn it on, we got something under the hood. For Florida State, Jordan Travis was in command. I was really impressed by him with his decision-making. He didn't light up the stat sheet necessarily. I think he threw for right around 260 yards. But he made good decisions with the football. He played within himself. He played within the offense. And for a guy who has been trying to get his – spot as QB1. I mean, it was him and McKenzie Milton a little bit last year. He was having to look over his shoulder. For him to get his spot as the guy for Florida State and take advantage of it in a game like this is really encouraging for Florida State fans. Because Jordan Travis was a guy they raved about in fall camp. And I sat on this show during the week and said, listen, I like the idea of Jordan Travis. I understand the appeal. He's a really good athlete. But I haven't seen it in a consistent game setting from him just yet. 15 touchdowns, six interceptions coming into it. It's very average. And again, his stat sheet wasn't phenomenal, but the way that he played within this system and the way that he moved this offense, you could tell he was in command, he was confident, and he was their leader for Florida State. The play that stuck out to me the most is when he dropped back, LSU gets through on the defensive line, Ali Gay delivers the crown of his helmet and absolutely destroys Jordan Travis. Just sent his whole being through him. Jordan Travis steps into it, throws a nice deep ball to Wilson, drops it in the bucket. Wilson catches it for a touchdown. Obviously was targeting on the play. But for Jordan Travis to stand in there, knowing that another enormous human being is about to just lay the lumber on you and you take that and still throw a great pass, that told me a lot about Jordan Travis. Even more so, that will validate a lot of things to his teammates that they probably already know. But I'm telling you, when they watch that one back in film, Jordan Travis is going to get a lot of love in that film room and deservedly so. So I was really impressed by him and what he did in that game. Got to talk about the defensive front. Got to talk about it. Four sacks. Jared Verse, the transfer, got after it. You have to be so encouraged that there's not going to be, based on this game at least, a huge step back from what they're able to do in that defensive front. The defense on the back end is more experienced. Um, you would like to see a little more from them when it comes to the end of that game, but I understand the scheme is different, right? You're playing man a lot of the game, and you go to prevent towards the end of the game. I'm not here to talk about the strategy necessarily, but overall, I think you're encouraged a lot of what you did during this game. A lot of good things to take away from this. 
the thing that I want to highlight the most for Florida State, and we talked about it a little bit actually with Florida as well, but the competitive maturity from this team to not flinch, to not get down. And Mike Norvell said it in the, in the post game. He said, hey, it was about heart for us. It was about continuing to, to keep our foot on the gas pedal. And I know that they had that tough play at the end where it's a fumble and the game's up in the air. But at the end of that game, it would have been so easy to say, hey, we're playing for overtime. Extra points coming. We're playing for overtime. Let's go beat them in extra time. Everybody on that field goal block unit went pedal to the metal, all out effort, intensity, energy, and found a way to ultimately end the game in regulation. And that's something we haven't seen from this program. Mike Norvell in this program, I mean, they lost to, I think it was Jacksonville State last year. This team a year ago doesn't win this game. The strides they've taken as a program and their culture under Mike Norvell, I think is highlighted in this game, can ultimately probably be highlighted in that moment for them. So for Florida State, my biggest takeaway is they have a direction. They're more experienced on this roster. You got your QB1, Jordan Travis, who is continuing to progress. You have Alex Atkins as the offensive coordinator, who I think is doing a great job. And I love the way that he's synced up with the offensive line, also being the offensive line coach. And your defensive front is continuing to force the issue for your program. You have an identity at Florida State. Based on this game, they have an identity. Can they build on that? Can they move forward? Florida State goes to Louisville next. LSU welcomes the Southern Jaguars to Baton Rouge. But this game gave us all we could handle. And then some, again, Florida State winning in dramatic fashion, 24-23 in New Orleans. That's it for us here on The Hard Count. Appreciate you tuning in. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JD Pacal. Again, check us out on podcast. We're going to keep the party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.